Your scene sources look like this. Hi, my name is Coco, and in this video, we're going to talk about everything you need to know about nested scenes. Although this video is for OBS Studio users, the steps are relatively the same, so you can follow along if you use Streamlabs desktop. If not, there's a dedicated video in the card above or in the link in the description down below. What is a nested scene, you might ask? Well, as the name entails, a nested scene is a scene inside another scene. Think of it as a container that can be copied and modified without changing the contents of that said container. To add a nested scene, you can go into the Sources doc, click on Add, and select the Scenes option. From there, you can select any other scene that you would like to import as a source into the current scene. When I make a nested scene, I typically use the NS keyword in the front of the nested scene, so I know that that scene is a nested scene and I shouldn't really touch it that often, or that there's no audio in it, or something like that. So why would you want to use nested scenes? Well, first of all, it reduces the clutter you have in your Sources doc. So you have a lot less sources inside one scene. You can also apply filters like a green screen effect to a whole scene so you don't have to apply it to every individual source. If you want to make any modifications instead of going in all your different scenes that uses those sources, you can just go in that one scene that is nested in all the other scenes and make your modifications there. You also don't need to add any more key bindings whenever you add your nested scene somewhere else. You can just have one single key binding that removes whatever source is inside of that scene it does, however, clutter the amounts of scenes you have in your scenes doc. But since you don't typically modify those original nested scenes, I typically move it down in my scenes doc and delimit them with another scene that's empty that just says don't touch anything that's below it. It obviously takes more time to set up, but it saves a lot of time in the long run. But what are nested scenes used for? for? Well, you can use them for overlays, webcam source groups, audio devices, different game sources, soundboard files, or any source that you typically have inside of a group or a folder and have copied in many different places. I, for example, have seven nested scenes for just my webcam. Since I have a standing desk, I have two nested scenes with just one source in them, which is the webcam, one of them for when I'm sitting down, and the other one that has the webcam slightly raised up for when I'm standing at my desk. I then have a webcam master nested scene with both of those webcam scenes inside of it, and one of them can be toggled on and off with either a key binding or a stream deck key. That webcam master scene is then used in four other nested scenes. I have one for when I look towards the left when I look at chat, and then to the right when I look at chat, and then I have both in horizontal and vertical format. This is for whenever I want to use my webcam on the left side or on the right side of my screen, so I'm always looking towards the middle of the screen. If I want to make a slight change to the webcam, instead of going inside of every single scene where my webcam source is used, I can just go inside of the nested scene, make my changes there, and it'll apply in every other scene that my webcam is used in. On my game nested scene, I have my Elgato capture card, which is usually always turned off unless I know that I'm going to play something on uh, the Elgato. I have whatever full screen application is currently running on my computer. Then I have my main desktop screen, which I can toggle on and off with a key binding or again with a key on my stream deck. I have a nested scene with all my audio devices since I have them all split up into different tracks. One audio source for my desktop audio, another audio source for my microphone, another audio source for all chat applications like Discord, and the last audio source for music whenever uh, I want to listen to music in the same time. Then I could just add that one nested scene inside of any other scene and my audio sources will be there. I also have a nested scene where all my on-screen overlays are inside. Inside I have my alert box, my shout out overlay, my trigger fire graphics, and my modular schedule command overlay. It's pretty much all you need to know about nested scenes. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, make sure you leave a like rating as it does help the channel reach to new viewers. And make sure that other streamers that might be just starting out also know this kind of information that might be very useful to them. If you have any questions or need further guidance, make sure you leave a comment down below. Also comment on what else you would like to learn more about in OBS Studio. I might make a tutorial on that in the future. Check out the playlist linked above or in the description of this video to take your OBS skills to the next level. It covers more in-depth tutorials and neat tips and tricks you can start using to make your content even better. You can follow us on Twitch where we currently stream every Sunday, Thursday, and Friday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Subscribe for more tutorials like this, gaming videos, and vlogs from the VNR Project, and I'll catch you next time. Go.